Welcome back everybody, I'm Giles, and today we're gonna talk about the Iberostar Selection Cancun. So me and my family have come on vacation and we're staying here for the very first time and we're super, super excited about this hotel because we've been told it's very high end and gives you everything that you would want out of an all-inclusive encounter. In this video, we're gonna show you everything that you need to know to make a decision as to whether you want to come to this hotel or not. We'll talk about the food, we'll talk about the activities, we'll talk about the facilities, we'll talk about the amenities, and we'll give you images and video of all those things so you can kind of get that first-hand experience yourself via the video. To get started, let's take a look at the facilities of the hotel. The grounds here are huge, and we're gonna break them up into six different segments. And to get started, we'll take a look at the main building first. The main building contains the reception area, the spa, the gym, a number of restaurants, including the buffet, hotel rooms, and the cafe. Now, let's jump into each of these and I'll tell you what I thought of them on our family trip to the hotel. So uh, reception was great. Staff was awesome. You've got uh, a bellboy out front to help you with the bags. No problems there at all. And in general, staff here is really, really good. And, and you know, they get gold stars all the way around. I did use the spa and the spa seems adequate. Uh, there's a hot sauna, a number of different kinds of pools, locker room areas. It's obviously expensive because it's at the hotel, but it got the job done and I enjoyed it. So uh, no issues there. I did not use the gym, so I have no comment on that at all. Now for the restaurants, we'll cover those in a separate section about food. For the hotel room, I can tell you about the one that we had specifically, and I do think this is likely the worst hotel room in the entire facility. The room had no balcony, which was an issue. I like to have a place that we can put our swimsuits to dry. The AC was poor, didn't cool that well, and it was very, very, very loud. In general, the room was old and worn out. It had some damage. It's been through the ringer a few times and desperately needs an upgrade. But all that being said, it was okay. Is it five star resort okay? No, but hopefully this isn't indicative of all of the rooms. Now they have the new coral area that is much newer and is likely much nicer, but that's adults only. So if you have kids, that won't be an option for you. Next up are the villas. The villas are additional hotel rooms, but they're detached from the main building. So there are a lot of small buildings that have multiple units, but they're a bit more secluded. So if you wanna have more of a private holiday, this might be the right area for you. We didn't go inside of these, so I don't know what the rooms look like, but I do know they have their own private pools. They aren't really private, meaning that anyone could go to the pool, but you can tell that they were designed to be used by folks staying in the villas. Uh, if you want to be away from everything inside of the resort, give these a look. Now we find ourselves outside of I guess it's called the Coral Building. So what's interesting about the hotel is that there are two sections. You've got the main building. It's the one that kind of looks like the pyramid. And then you've got this facility. And the distinction between the two is that this is adults only. So if you bring a family, you're not gonna be in here, but if you come alone or you come with a significant other, you can ask for a room in this facility. Now, I didn't go in there because I've got two young kids and we spent all of our time in the pyramid section, the main facility. Uh, but if you are single or you are coming here with a group of adults, this might be the spot for you. Now, we'll also take a look at the adult pool area that they have. Uh, so you can check that out as well. So just more options for you when you're deciding about this hotel. If you're into outdoor sports, this is the section for you. The Iberostar features two tennis courts, a full soccer field, and an 18 hole, 72 par, 150 acre golf course. Now, golf isn't included in the price, but it's right next door to the hotel. So if you wanna play, this is a great spot for you to stay. Now this all takes up huge, vast amounts of land. And it's really cool because it makes this resort feel even larger. I mean, this is expansive. Everything's taken care of very well. The golf course is beautiful. I would highly recommend that you check these out if this is something that you're into. Now we'll move on to the theater. So the theater is kind of an interesting building. It's quite large. It's designed to hold 
100, 200 people, uh, but it's open to the elements on the sides. However, it's covered on top and they use this to project movies, to have stage performances. It's really an event center and it also has a bar. So you might find yourself here in the evenings if you wanna come and watch a movie or listen to music or go to a magic show, whatever it is that they have showing on that particular night. The pool area here is absolutely expansive. It's a little bit loud. There's always a lot of stuff going on, but there's always a lot of stuff to do. So there are special events throughout the entire day, uh, different kind of games you can play. On top of that, there's, I think, three hot tubs, uh, four or five different pools, a swim up bar. It's absolutely massive. One thing to understand about the Iberostar Star Selection Cancun is that it's kind of far from everything. Now, everything is close together, but in the scheme of things, it's one of the further hotels away from what I would call the hot spot of Cancun. So if you're coming here on spring break and you want to go to the clubs, that kind of thing, you're going to have to travel from the hotel to where you want to party at. Now, you can do that in a couple of different ways. You can take a taxi or you can take a bus. Now, right out here, we've got the bus stop for uh, the, the R1, the R2, and I think another couple of lines go through there as well. And they will all take you up and down the strip here in the hotel zone. Uh, it's 12 pesos per person or one US dollar to take the bus. And here you can hop off right in front of the hotel and take it north to all the action. The beach here at the Ibero Star is pretty typical of what you can expect to find in Cancun. Um, there's a lot of waves, it's pretty strong, um, but the thing that you want to really understand is that there are going to be a lot of rocks here. So you'll want to wear some type of foot covering, you know, a water shoe, something like that, uh, because this isn't deep sand as you go out into the surf. There are going to be rocks out there and you're going to cut your feet up a little bit if you're not careful. Other than that though, it's beautiful. There have not been a ton of people here at the beach while we've been here. So we've had great access. The sun is wonderful. The smell is good. But like I said, a little bit rocky, uh, but plenty of sand to enjoy. Now we're gonna to touch on the food and there is quite a bit of food to talk about. And I really enjoyed it because I like food a lot. There are six different restaurants and we're gonna step through each one quickly. First up is a steakhouse, La Paria. We did go there, we enjoyed it. The food was good. My son had the prime rib, I had a steak. Uh, nothing really stood out as amazing, but it was a nice solid meal, very much recommended. Absolutely check that out. The next is the Japanese restaurant, Naga Hibachi, and it's really just a hibachi. This was our favorite by far. You have to go to this one if you stay at this resort. Uh, the cooking of the food really turns this more into an event than just a meal. So it really creates an event that you'll remember. Next up is what they call the gourmet restaurant, La Horma. It's an Italian restaurant and it was good, no problems there. Uh, we did go to the buffet many, many times and I believe the name is pronounced El Antiguo Laguito. Uh, it does have odd hours for lunch. It's closed from I think something like 11 to 12.30. So kind of interesting that it's closed past noon. Uh, the food there was okay. It's nothing to rave about, but there's a good selection. It was fresh. They're cooking things for breakfast and for lunch, so no problems there at all. Uh, there's a Mexican restaurant called Maguev, I think it's pronounced. We didn't eat there, so I'm not sure about that one. And another called La Barca that we did not visit either. Uh, all in all, plenty of food. Quality of the food was fine. I think you'll be able to find something for anybody in the group, and I would give this higher than midway score. So it's, you know, out of five stars, maybe three and a half or four. I, I enjoyed it and thought it was really good. Now, hopefully all of the information that we've given you in this video helps you decide if you want to visit this resort or not. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe, ring the bell, do all those normal things. And if you do go, drop a comment down below, let us know what you think. And if you've been in the past, let us know what you think as well. Uh, it, it was a really good vacation for us and we do recommend this one. We don't know if we'll go back or not, but it's good for at least one shot to see if you like it or not. Thanks for watching everybody.